be missed. Hi, this is Luke from MGN, and today we're going to go through episode 5, part 5 of the Dark Deity class overviews. Today is Rogue. Rogue would have to probably and arguably be the most popular class. If you've ever visited the Dark Deity subreddit, you'll see a plethora of Rogue posts. Um, a lot of them are based around Sia, since she's the first Rogue that you will unlock, but um, yeah, people have been able to pull off some pretty common, crazy combinations with the Rogue class, so let's get started. Classes in Dark Deity are split up into six different trees, with the Ranger, Warrior, Cleric, and Mage available during the first mission, and then the Rogue and Adept coming shortly thereafter. Today we're going to go through a pretty comprehensive guide on everything to do with the Rogue class. What you can expect from using Rogue characters, where you can take them, their stats, their skills, Look, all the information that you need to plan out rogue characters. Naturally, if you want to avoid spoiling the class unlocks or the characters that are available pretty late into the game, well, you should turn back now because there's going to be spoilers aplenty from here on in. I'll give you a little chance. Normally in the genre, rogue would fill the role in the party of generally a bit of a thief. They're for stealing items that enemies you know, won't drop normally without stealing. Um, they're for opening doors, they're from looting chests. But those mechanics have been improved to allow any unit to operate doors and chests, and enemies will always drop their inventory on death in Dark Deity. So, with that filled in, what ro role does the rogue have, um, and is it really a necessity in your party? Well, they can fit a few roles, and it entirely depends on what you want from them, and what your party composition needs. If you're in need for another tank, rogues can make some of the best in the game. Sh shocking, I, I guess, but like, yeah, they can. Combine their natural evasion through any promotion tree with artifacts that improve your chance to dodge, like the strength adds to dodge chance artifact, and you'll have a dodge tank. With these sort of builds, often you can funnel a wave a wave after enemy into your dodge tank with their chance to hit you reduced to 1%. If that's not something that you need, uh, but you still want to use some rogue characters, well, fear not, because they can also fill some other gaps in your team as well. You can spec them heavily into crit chance and crit damage, and have yourself a rogue nuking character. Or follow the mobility path, whittle down enemies for your allies, or even use that mobility to make rogue your disarm bot. Their ability disarm is very useful, and if you combine that with high mobility, well, you've got a utility rogue. Take Thief early for the plus 2 disarm range, then maybe Slayer late for the 8 movement, and you've got a pretty good disarm board. I think that's the best way that you can make a disarm board. We're going to start with the stats and abilities of the base class in Rogue, then the stats and abilities of each promotion option at level 10, and then obviously finally the stats and abilities of the final promotions at level 30. Naturally the base class is called Rogue. Their damage type is piercing, their armor type is leather, they have a 5 movement range, their attack range is exclusively 1, and their class skill, like I mentioned, is disarm, which removes an enemy's weapon bonus for one turn. So you've got disadvantage, well, now you don't. Their first level 10 promotion option is stalker. Your damage type will remain piercing and your armor type will also remain leather, but you'll get an extra movement range, your attack range will stay at 1. And the first class skill for Stalker is that you're guaranteed to hit enemies that are below 20% HP. You get 100% hit. The second is that you get a 5% chance to just insta-kill any enemy that you battle. Um, this doesn't directly apply to bosses. If it's an, a boss or an enemy that has over 300 health, things like that, um, it'll just do that 300 health. And it can be affected by criticals as well, so if you get a 5% chance to insta-kill critical, it'll do 600 damage to that boss. The next option for your level 10 promotions is Thief. Your damage type will change to Slashing, your armor type will remain Leather, you'll get that boost up to 6 movement range, your attack range will still be 1. Uh, and the first class skill for Thief is that their speed increases their armor penetration, so as their speed skill goes up, you get through armor easier. The second is that they get an extra 2 on their disarm range, so they don't have to be on top of enemies to disarm them. The third option for level 10 promotions for the rogue class characters is Duelist. Their damage type will be piercing, their armor type is chain, they still have that 6 movement range, and they have an attack range of 1. Their first class skill for the Duelist is that power, crit, and dodge, and accuracy 
is increased by 15% when not standing next to an ally. That's a lot of stats and 15% is a pretty big number. Their second class skill is that their defense is increased by 20% of their dexterity stat. So Duel Duelist is a really good statistic option in general. Your last, your fourth option for level 10 promotions as a rogue is the Raider class, the Mounted, and as such, Raiders count towards the Mounted Cavalry achievement that's in the game. Their damage type is Cleaving, their armor type is Hardy, it's its plate. They get a big movement range all the way up to 7 from the uh, rogue's default 5. And their first class skill is that their power is increased by 35% if they attack an enemy that is at full health. That's a nice little bonus, make sure your Raider goes first. And their second class skill, it doesn't happen too often, but when it does, it really changes how your, uh, how your run will go, is that when they kill an enemy, they have a 3% chance to gain a stat up item after kill. So those items that cost 5,000 gold in the store, you can get a free one, but only 3% chance, and you gotta kill it. Okay, so that's level 10 promotions. Once we hit level 30, we get our final promotions, and the first option for rogue characters is Assassin. The Assassin's damage type is Slashing, their armor type is Leather, they have a 6 movement range, and their attack range is still exclusively 1. Their first class skill is that you'll gain 50% crit chance for 1 turn after every second kill. A bit of a nuanced one there, but not terribly difficult to pull off. And their second class skill helps you the more rogues you have, the better. Plus 20% crit damage per deployed friendly rogue. That's not crit chance, that's crit damage. So that can ramp up really quick if you're using a lot of rogues. The second option for level 30 promotions is Trickster. Their damage type is Projectile. Their armor type is Leather. They have a movement range of 6. And their attack range is a bit unique for the rogue. Is that they can attack from 1 or 2 spaces away. Yeah, that's right. They become a ranged unit. But they can also still attack up close. Their first class skill is that criticals have a speed percent chance to deal an extra 50% damage. So instead of the double damage, you get 2.5. And their second class skill is an extra plus 2 range on your disarm. So you can get pretty far away with, the, with both class skills that increase disarm range. Third option for rogue promotions is Gladiator. Their damage type is piercing, their armor type is chain, their movement range is 6, their attack range is 1. The first class skill for Gladiator is that their power is increased by 20% for one turn after killing an enemy, and that stacks. So, if you get a bunch of kills in enemy phase, all of those add up. And the second is that every time you get a crit, you heal for 20% of the damage dealt, which means that your Gladiator is going to have full HP a lot. Last option for rogue character level 30 promotions is the Slayer. Damage type for Slayer is Cleaving, their armor type is Plate, they get a big movement range, it's up to 8. Their attack range is exclusively 1, but their first class skill is that you get an extra 4% power. That's the advanced stat for every kill in that map stacking. It doesn't, doesn't uh, carry over to your next map, but if you get a few kills on the same map, it's a really good boss killer. Uh, and they also get their second class skill, which is your power is increased by 35% against full health enemies, and that stacks if you take the same talent at level 10 as well. Moving on to characters, the characters that you're going to encounter in Dark Deity, who you can promote and who are playable as rogues. The first is Sia, probably the most well-known one. She's very, very popular. Um, and her default skill is probably one of the worst. Uh, I think her popularity is probably due to her recruitment order um, and just how really, really good rogue characters are early. Well, throughout the game, but especially Sia early. Sia's default skill is that she just gets an extra 50% effect from all the healing items. So you eat food, 50% extra. The next is Brooke, and her default skill is that her crit modifier is increased against full health enemies. So if the enemy you're battling hasn't been hurt by anyone else, you have a much higher chance of getting a critical hit. Third is Corvin, the elf, and his is a really good support default skill. Its allies within two tiles of Corvin gain an extra 8% of their mastery stat. Next is Ford, and he just has a flat 8% chance to dodge that is separate from every other calculation. So, no matter what their accuracy or your dodge is, take all that away, you've just got an 8%, as well as those other chances. Last is Ren, and his mastery further increases his armored penetration. So if you're having trouble with armored units, plate units, go to Ren, he'll get it done. 
that's going to wrap things up for our overview of the rogue class. If you've had any particular success with specking a character down a certain class line, grabbing specific level 10 and level 30 skills, well, we'd love to hear about your success or your failure as it might be on the MGN.gg blog, our YouTube channel, of course, the new MGN Twitter at MGN underscore TV, uh, and our new Discord. I'm going to put links for all these in the description of the rogue class overview. Thank you so much for checking it out.